for your grace, God. I praise you today. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercies to us, for your compassions that fail not, God. Thank you that they're new every morning, Jesus. I praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I give you honor today, giving you praise and glory, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad today that I know about the grace of God. Glad that I have experienced and am even today experiencing the grace of a mighty God. A God who is no respecter of persons. A God who knows all things. A God who has all wisdom. A God who is uh, love. Amen. He is love today. I'm glad for his love to us. Praise God. It's good to be in his service today. Good to know that he reigns. Amen. I'm glad that he is in control and reigns in our world today. Amen. So grateful for the mercies of God. Amen. Good to be in the presence of God. Good to know that he lives. Amen. He does live today. Praise God. I appreciate him. So glad that we can come together in our homes and uh, we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth that we can get in his presence by praising him and praying and loving him I'm grateful for his goodness today amen I'm glad to be a part of the church of the living God one who has no no lack of wisdom one who has no lack of power amen he's able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer today. I'm glad for all of you that are, that are listening and watching this morning. We want to go to the Lord in prayer together. I want you to pray with us. We trust that you worshiped as we sang and lifted up the Lord this morning. And uh, our homes ought to be a place of worship just as our house of God is. And uh, we ought to be able to lift our voices unashamedly in praise to our God. Amen. And this morning as we pray, we want to pray for those who are sick. Sister Hampton is not feeling well and uh, allergies perhaps, but we want to pray and ask God to touch her. We want him to minister to every need. There are others among us that need a touch in their bodies. We believe God's able. Amen. We want to thank God for the progress 
that I feel like is being made. Uh, some of our states are beginning to set forward plans of how they will reopen, and I understand that Idaho also has some plans on how to start beginning to normalize our situation. And uh, I'm believing that God's going to bring us all the way through, and we're going to gain victory over all of these things that we've had to deal with. And uh, I really believe that if we would pray and ask God to give us a fervent relationship with him, that our witness could be at peak during the times of these situations. Amen. I want my witness to be effective today. I want to be effective to those I come in contact with. So let's pray for one another. Pray for those who are sick this morning. Pray for our church in general. Pray for the district. Pray for the churches in this valley that God will help us to reach those that have come into this valley and some of them looking perhaps for a church. We want to make ourselves available to them. Amen. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. God, we're praying today that you'd touch every heart. God, that you'd move in every life today, that you'd minister, Lord, to those who are in need. God, we praise you for your mighty hand. We praise you for a great victory today. Jesus, we're asking you to minister to those who are sick. Touch my wife, Lord, and the others among us who need your touch in their body. Jesus, you're the healer today. You have all power. You have all wisdom, God. You know every need today, Jesus. God, would you move in their lives right now, God? Would you minister today? Minister to the spirits of men and women, Lord, that are in the church today. Touch our district, God. Touch our church. Touch each of our churches. God, move, I pray, and minister to every need. Touch our leaders, God. Touch our president today, our governor, Lord. Give them wisdom. Give them direction. Keep your hand upon them, I pray, Jesus. God, work your will in every situation. Minister, I pray to those, Lord, who are able today to reach out to you in faith. God, I pray today that you direct the steps of each one, place a hunger, God, in the heart of every soul in this valley, that they would turn to you, Jesus. Help our witness today, Jesus, to be where it needs to be, that we would be effective in our world, in our community, in those we come in contact with today, Jesus. Help our witness to be what it should be, God. Lord, and I pray that you'd touch this service today. Let the Holy Ghost minister, Lord, as you reach down in our midst. God, I pray you'd work a work in every heart. Jesus, help those who are hungry to respond to your call. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. God, we thank you for your goodness to us. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I want to say thanks to those who are coming together and and helping to make these recordings take place. And, and uh, when the services are projected, when we tune into them, I pray that we're making our best effort in our homes to stay connected as a church and to allow God to touch us. You know, you don't have to be in the sanctuary to let the presence of God move in your life, but he can touch us wherever we are. And I trust that that's what's happening We've had several that are not in our particular church that have responded, and I'm grateful that God's given us an opportunity to reach out to others. Amen. So, so thankful for the truth of God's word this morning. Amen. I appreciate him so very much. Praise God. I want to uh, turn our attention this morning to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and uh, I feel like that God has spoken to my life spoken to me as I've been praying and uh, there's some things that of course uh, in the news and so forth a lot of a lot of fear that a lot of a lot of issues that people are dealing with that they're unsure of but we have a God that is not unsure he's fully aware of everything that's going on and he is able to help us today to give us wisdom to help us to navigate these waters and uh, that we will become victorious, that if we are not yet, we will become, we will overcome. Praise God. I appreciate the word of the Lord. It's forever settled. I'm grateful for a forever settled word. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to read verses 3 through 8, and then we'll skip down to later in the chapter. 
But uh, Matthew chapter 3, and as he sat, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? I think that question probably is very prevalent even in our day today. What shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. And I think that perhaps we ought to look at this fact that these were disciples of Jesus. They were not unbelievers. They were believers. Even believers have questions about when the Lord's coming. I've heard people talk about uh, the coming of the Lord and, and some, ho some hold a belief that uh, the Lord will return before any tribulation. Those are called pre-tribulation believers. Some believe that he will come in mid, uh, in the middle of the tribulation. They call those mid-trib believers. And then there's probably some who hold the belief that he will come after the tribulation or post-tribulation. And, um, and, and that probably is a question we ought to at least sometime ought to look at. But uh, it's been an, it's an age-old question, what will be the sign of your coming and what will be the sign of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Jesus pointed out several other issues as you read on down, and I'm not going to take the time to read it all, but the question that they ask is what will be the sign of your coming, and what about the end of the world? Amen. I'm grateful today that God has an answer. And he gave them a rather lengthy answer. Amen. And uh, so uh, in, our, in, our, in, in what I feel like God has spoken to me today, I feel like that he has directed my thoughts to this, to this particular thought, the urgency of the hour. We've seen lots of things happen in the last few weeks, in the last few days actually, probably a week and a half. I've had numerous phone conversations, uh, many of which are people expressing their disbelief as to where we're at in time. Some have uh, expressed their thoughts and what is happening in the world and more closely in the good old USA. Many are in question about where are we? Where do you think we are in time? And I certainly don't propose to have all the answers, but I do believe that we're hearing from God and that we're seeing things take place that help us to understand that the Lord has certainly allowed some things to come upon us. Jesus said, when you hear about nations rising against nations, when you hear about kingdoms rising against kingdoms, when there are wars and rumors of wars, he said, don't be troubled. This is the beginning. The end is not yet. These are the beginning of sorrows. And uh, we talked about earthquakes in diverse places. And of course, those things are taking place today. There are many things that have taken place. In fact, in the news in the last recent days, we, we, we read about uh, circumstances where our governments feel that someone has intentionally unleashed this, uh, perhaps not intentionally unleashed it, but failed to get control of this virus that was created in a lab somewhere. Perhaps that's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just something God has allowed. I certainly know that he's in control and that maybe he has allowed these things. But, but we are in a world today of many troubles. Amen. In uh, the latter portion of the scripture, beginning in verse 35, Jesus speaking said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father 
of but my father only. But as the days of Noah, and here he begins to liken the things that we will see in the, in the last days. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I felt like God directed me to this, act, this particular portion in light of the fact that there are people all around us who know where we are in time is very strange, very difficult, and yet they are not willing to understand that the Lord is coming for a people that have made themselves ready. In the midst of all of these troubles, there is an underlying theme in my mind that God, I believe, has placed there. We, it's not nearly as critical to know when he's coming as it is to know that we're ready for his coming. It's not nearly as pertinent today that you know when the trumpet's going to sound as it is that you know that the trumpet will sound. Amen. The pertinent thought, the urgency of the hour demands that we as believers are ready. And should there be someone who hungers to know God, he will help you to be the believer that he wants you to be. He said also, then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house, this is one of my favorite scriptures in this particular writing. In fact, uh, this is such a, I believe, a very pertinent hour that we live in. If the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. This is the point that I feel like God wants me to make today. It is urgent enough that we as individuals, we're the keeper of our own soul. We are our own keeper today. Amen. I understand that God gives us breath, but he allows us the room to make decisions, which makes us the keeper of our own house. Amen. And he said, if the good man of the house had known, if he would have learned what was going on, if he would have been concerned enough to understand where he lived and the time of his life, if he would have watched, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Jesus just said, watch therefore for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. We need to be the good men of our home. Amen. We need to be the good men of our personal life. We need to make up our mind. I'm not going to be caught unaware. Amen. I'm not going to allow the things that we are facing today to cause me to be caught unaware. I refuse to be lost because I did not pay attention or because I did not make myself ready. Amen. He said, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? We have the ability. We have, uh, we're a much educated people. We have the ability to navigate life. Most of us uh, consider ourselves, at least in some manners, very successful. We, we consider ourselves to have the ability to overcome or the ability to navigate life. We, we, we make our living. We, we make decisions that we feel good about because we use, our we use our learning ability to determine what's the best for us, what will bring us to the best place in life. What will give me the best opportunity? What will provide me the best living for my home? What will affect my family in a best way? What will provide for them in a way that's better than it could have been otherwise? God, help us today to make up our mind that in spiritual matters, we will make our best effort. We will use the intellect that God has given us to make our choices. The hour is urgent and we need to make right decisions. Amen. From thoughts uh, in our world today, people have expressed thoughts of, of even conspiracies and what I feel is indeed an awakening to humanity from God. 
we are facing and, and have been dealing with for several weeks now an extremely infectious virus. We've seen earthquakes in numerous places. Uh, very little is mentioned of it in the news because of this virus that we're dealing with. But in places in our world today, there are swarms of locusts that have destroyed crops. There are unsettled financial markets that have destroyed folks' finances, that have cost them all of their savings, perhaps. But let us remind us today, God is still in control. Amen. In a world of so much chaos... In a world of so much trouble, God still reigns supreme. He still rules this world today. He still has power over everything. Amen. A word from God could stop the virus. A word from God could stop the earthquake. But also a word from God could increase the earthquakes. Amen. It could increase the things that we're facing. Sometimes we wonder why God would allow such things on people that love him. And we certainly, in our organization, the United Pentecostal Church, we have lost numerous people already. And on the other hand, we've had numerous ones healed. God has miraculously brought some of them out of these sicknesses. And oh, Saint, I'm so glad that God never changes. He's still a miracle working God. He still has power over every need today. Amen. But I thought about some of the things that perhaps could cause God to feel like he does. I just read this week that in, in America, in the good old USA, the place that we obviously love. Amen. There are an average of 16,583 abortions every week in the United States. 16,000, an average of 16,000, over 16,500 murders takes place every week in the United States. And a child that should be born is never given the opportunity to breathe the air that you and I breathe today. That comes to 862,000 average on an annual basis. One year. 862,000 lives taken every year. It makes me wonder why churches can be closed and abortion clinics can be considered essential. I mean, it makes me, there's no question in my mind as to how this must grieve our God. There's no question in my mind as to how we as the believers, that we as the church ought to hold this in such uh, a, a pitiful state. We ought to be praying about this as much as we pray about the virus that we're dealing with. The, with. the so much disregard for the sanctity of human life. It's no wonder that we could and maybe are seeing the response of a God that is not pleased with the actions of humanity. Amen. This is just one of the things. In fact, abortion is the leading cause of death in the United States every year. The second cause of death is heart disease and abortions are five times more abortions. Five times more lose their life to abortion than does to heart disease every year. This is an amazing number, 862,000 a year average death by abortion in the United States. How sad and how horrible that and also how understandable that God could be angry, that God could be allowing those who think they have control to recognize that they do not have control and that he alone is in control. But I'm not here to preach about an angry God today. I've never felt his love. My, my, I feel him even now. I've never felt the love of God more close and more strong than I have felt it in the last few days. I've never felt his compassion greater than I feel it even now. I've never known that, that the drawing power of God to be so strong as I feel it, it is that it is right now. I believe God's not willing that any perish. I believe that he is willing that all come to repentance. I don't believe God's looking for a time or looking for a way to eradicate humanity or to cut people off, but I believe he is allowing us to experience some things that should propel us toward him. 
Amen. The urgency of the hour tells me that we need to be reaching like we've never reached. The urgency of the hour tells me that we need to make sure that our calling and our election is sure. We need to set in our minds that we are serving a God who alone is in control. Amen. The urgency of the hour is a pleading cause for every soul, for every man, for every woman, for every boy, every girl. Get themselves in a position of being the good man of their house. Amen. I have the ability to make decisions today to make me the right man, the, the good man of the house that refuses to be caught unaware. Amen. If the good man, Jesus said of the house, had known in what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched. If the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief, this, this, this scripture is powerful to me. If the good man of the house, the good man of the house, the good man of the house, amen. We have the ability to be the good man of our house today. We have a world full of opinions. We have people who express themselves very clearly. We have people who think that it is their business or is their job to express their opinion and everybody is supposed to buy into their opinion. Can I help somebody today that it doesn't matter what our opinion is if it differs from the word of God. We need God's opinion about ourselves. We need God's opinion about us. Amen. I'm not going to read it today, but in Revelation, the Lord gave John uh, an understanding of where he saw the churches. Amen. In, in, in the seven churches of Asia Minor that God addressed through the writings of John in the book of Revelation, he said, I know where you are. I understand where you are. Can I help us today by giving this information to us that God knows where we are today? He knows if we're the good men of our house. He knows if we're aware of the circumstances. Amen. I would, I would encourage you to pray. I would, I would plead with you to pray and make sure that you hear from God. Pray until you know you've heard from God. Pray until you know you've touched God. Pray until you know that God has your attention and that you have given him your attention and he's able to speak into your life. Let the word of God minister to you as you pray and understand that God has given us his will. He's given us his directives today and we alone hold the power to make our calling and our election sure. While, con while conviction grips your heart, what are you doing with the conviction that God brings to us? Amen. Someone said to me many years ago that conviction is not God's anger, it's God's love reaching down to us. What are we doing when God brings conviction to us? Are we pushing it aside? Are we responding with, I'll take care of that later? Or are we saying, God, would you lead me? Let conviction grip me. Let conviction bring me to a place where I understand your will, God. Lord, would you use convicting power to cause me to buy into your word and cause me to get a hold of what you desire for my life. I want God to be the one that helps me understand the urgency of where we are today. Amen. How are we responding when God calls our heart? Amen. Paul said that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I understand he was writing that to the church, but we truly, the believers that are filled with the Holy Ghost, we are the temple of of the living God. Amen. The trumpet will surely sound. Amen. Just as has been promised in the word of God. Amen. The dead in Christ. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians will rise. And then we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet them in the air. Are you ready? Are we ready today? This is the urgent question. It's not when Jesus is coming. But the urgent question is are you ready for his coming? Amen. Much more pertinent than knowing when the trumpet's going to sound is that we are ready when the trumpet sounds. Amen. This is the urgency of the hour. Amen. We are here today as a church. We're here as believers to try to be witness to others around us. 
Amen. Jesus told us in the book of Acts, he said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Every position on the earth, every place in our world, amen, God wants us to be wherever we are in this world today. Whatever our location God wants us to be witnesses of his power. He wants us to be witnesses of his goodness. He wants us to declare the whole gospel to the whole world. He wants us to be those who are witnesses and have an effective witness. The urgency is, is that when we come in contact with someone who is not a believer, that our life is so powerful by the power and the Holy Ghost that God would cause us to be effective in their life. Amen. I want to be, I want to convey the message today that it's urgent that we live for God. Yes, but it's urgent even more so that we are ready every day. Amen. Every moment of our life. Amen. We here at Calvary Temple are here to help you. If you've never repented, we want to pray with you. If you'll reach out to us, we'll help you. We'll pray with you. We'll give you scripture that give you an understanding of why it's necessary to repent. We're ready to baptize you in water in the name of Jesus Christ, the only saving name. Amen. Paul, or rather Peter, said in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, he said, and neither is there salvation in any other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We don't take on the name in repentance. We don't take on the name in receiving the Holy Ghost. The only place we take on the name is in our baptism. When we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It is applied to our life. And Paul said in Ephesians that the whole family of God is named after the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're here to pray with you. We're here to baptize you. We're here to help you receive the Holy Ghost, to pray with you until the Holy Ghost comes. Amen. Be the good man of your house. Be the one who says, I'm going to be ready when Jesus comes. I'm going to make my calling and my election sure. Amen. I want to read to us from the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 this morning. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, he has called every believer to virtue. He's called every believer. He has given us an ability to experience the glory of his power. Amen. Paul is writing to the church. And I believe that forever, uh, every one of us that are in the church, I believe that for us today, it's pertinent that we experience all that God has for us. And that we follow him. Amen. If I could use this terminology, that we follow him to the letter. Amen. Not veering or not detouring or not being led away, but we are following him with our sight set on him. We have purposed in our heart. We've made up our mind. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to allow his will. I'm going to ensure that his will has become my will. I refuse to walk after the direction of the world, but I want to walk in the direction that God would lead us. Amen. Peter is writing to us, helping us understand that whereby are given exceeding unto us exceeding great and precious promises 
that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Paul, Peter rather said that if we will understand that we can gain some things through our knowledge of God, that he's called us to glory and to virtue. And by these things, by having this virtue, by experiencing the life of commitment, by making sure that we understand the urgency of the hour, that we have been made partakers of divine nature. We've been given exceeding great and precious promises that we have escaped the corruption that's in the world. And beside this, we give all diligence. We set our mind on some things. If I give diligence, I, I invest in it. When I'm giving all diligence, I'm making sure that I've paid attention. When I'm giving all diligence, I make sure that I don't miss a point, that I don't leave anything out, that I don't cause anybody to question whether or not I'm in the church, but I have given diligence, that I have added to my faith virtue. Virtue that I've given, I've made sure that I, I somehow not just believe in God, but my belief in God has added some things to my life. We are known by who we are. We're known by our actions. We're known by our speech. We're known by what we possess and what we display. Amen. And if our faith is where it ought to be, there ought to be some virtue added to our faith. And then he said, to your virtue, add knowledge. I want to get it right. I don't want to get it half right. I don't want to be almost right. But I want my faith and my virtue to be based on the knowledge of the word of God. Amen. And to knowledge, he said, add temperance. The ability to, uh, to allow, for things to go on around us and keep your resolve. We're not driven by circumstances. We're not driven by the, the elements around us. Uh, the things that are going on around us don't cause us to lose our faith. But we have a temperate spirit that says, you know what, I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him. I want to be temperate enough so that I am not swayed by the things around me. Amen. I want to be temperate enough to know what to put my faith in. Amen. And he said to your temperance, add patience. That's a hard task. Sometimes we, we dislike it because we have to have patience. The book of Hebrews tells us that we have need of patience. That after we have done the will of God, we might receive the promise. How long? Are you going to have to live in the promise before you receive the reward? How long are you going to have to wait after having obeyed the word of God to hear the trumpet sound and hear the Lord say, well done? For some, they were first hour saints of God. They went into the labor field at the first hour of the day. Some went in at midday and some went in at the 11th hour, but the reward was the same. We have need of patience today. Somebody said, if you pray for patience, you're praying for trial. You're praying for testing. That may be the case, but can I help somebody today to tell you that you still need patience? Amen. Somebody said, I seen a sign when I was just a child that said, patience, the ability to idle your motor when you feel like stripping your gears. We need patience today. Amen. Our world needs to see the church as a faithful, virtuous full of the knowledge of God, temperate and patient. We just keep believing. We just keep steadfast. We just be unmovable. We just stay where God has called us to. Even the urgency of the hour, we don't need to change because the hour changes. We need to live for God. We need to purpose in our heart that I'm going to serve God when things are well and I'm going to serve God when things are not so well. I'm going to live for God with virtue when I feel good. I'm going to live with God with virtue when things are coming down on me. I'm going to live for God with virtue. Amen. I'm going to be patient. Amen. And he said, and to patience, godliness. Add some godliness to your life. Amen. This is the hour that the world needs to see the church as a godly institution. This is the time that the world does not need to 
have us chime in with their fear. But this is a time when we ought to have some steadfast faith that God is with us, that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us, but he'll go with us. I want godliness that shines today in a world of darkness. And to godliness, he said, we need to add brotherly kindness. That's almost a rare virtue itself. But we need brotherly kindness. We need to be kind one to another. We need to pray one for another. It's hard to, it's hard to hate on somebody you're praying for. We ought to experience and demonstrate brotherly kindness. And to brother, brotherly kindness, he said, add charity. This is really translated as love. Amen. We ought to have some love about us. Amen. We ought to be, I think Paul said it well. In Galatians, I believe it is, he said, do good unto all men, especially those who are of the household of faith. We ought to have some charity. There ought to be some signs of love about the church. We don't rejoice in someone's sorrow. We don't rejoice. The only thing, the only sorrow we rejoice is when the devil's upset. We rejoice when the devil gets upset because things have not gone his way. I don't want anything to go his way. Verse 8, for if these things be in you and abound. For if these things be in you and abound. If these things be in you and abound. Come on, the urgency of the hour. These things ought to be visible. They ought to be more visible in the church today than they've ever been. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten Paul or rather Peter's writing to the church. He said he hath forgotten. If we do not have these things, he said he's blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. Again, diligence, the understanding that we have to give everything that we have. We have to make sure. I don't want to miss a point. I don't want to miss any portion of what God wants. The urgency of the hour demands that we be diligent about our relationship with God. Come on, instead of finding fault with those in the church, why don't you be diligent to show them how to live? I'm talking to the church this morning. Let's, instead of finding something wrong with somebody in the church, why don't we be diligent to show them how the church ought to be? Let's add these things to our life. Do you have virtue? Are you virtuous? Go back to, to the book of Proverbs Chapter 31, we find what a virtuous woman is. We ought to, every one of us ought to have some virtue in our life. That says this is what we believe. This is how we live because we believe this. This is how we do. We don't, we're not dishonest. We don't defraud anybody. We make sure that we live our lives in a circumspect manner, in a respectful way. Amen. He said if you lack these things, you're blind and cannot see afar off. And you've forgotten that. You were purged from your old sins. He said, wherefore, brethren, give diligence. Give diligence. Invest in this. Make sure you get it right. Can I help us today? The Lord cares about us, but he's going to hold us to the record. He's going to hold us to the word. He's going to hold us to what's right. He's going to, we're going to be judged by a God that's never failed. Amen. Make your calling. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Has God called you? Are you part of the elect? If you're not part of the elect today, you need to make yourself part of the elect. How do you do that? By obeying the plan of salvation. Amen. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to be baptized in Jesus' name. I'm going to be born of the Spirit or filled with the Holy Ghost, which is the new birth. That puts us in the bride of Christ. And from that point on, we need to have the fruit of the Spirit in our life, which is continued evidence that God lives in us. Amen. We need those things. We need to make sure that our calling and our election is sure. He said, for so an entrance 
shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Peter said, I refuse to forget to tell you or to decide not to tell you. I'm going to keep you in remembrance of these things. Amen. How many of you have read the word of God again and again and again and are challenged again and again and again by the reading of the word of God? I got to I got to get my life right. I got to be where God wants me to be. I got to do what God wants me to do. I got to be the kind of person God's called me to be. He said, I'm going to put you in remembrance of these things. Though you know them and be established in the present truth, yea, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle, as long as I'm in this flesh, he said, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance to the church today. Let me help us understand that we have a calling and an election to follow. I want to make it sure. Don't wait till your opportunity has passed to make up your mind that you need to be right with God. Make yourself right with God. To those that would, uh, would that desire to be in the bride of Christ, let me help you again. Let me give you this understanding that the Lord's coming back for the bride. He's going to return for the bride that hath made herself ready. Amen. Peter preached it on the day of Pentecost. With many other words did he exhort and testify, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. The world's not going to propel you to live for God. The elements may happen. Things may come. Trials may come. Circumstances may change. And it may cause us to have an understanding that we need to live for God. But if we're going to, live, if we're going to be saved, we're going to be saved from this untoward generation. We've got to look outside of this world's direction. We've got to look into the direction of God's word. We can save ourselves from this untoward generation. Amen. Again, I would, I would make you aware. We have our information. You can contact us. Look at our website. Look on our Facebook page. You can connect with us on either of those places. Amen. We want you to know that God cares about you, and we're here to help you. If we can help you, we want you to be in the bride of Christ. Amen. Don't, don't worry about what the people think. Don't worry about what other people around you may think you ought to do. Let God lead you. Let the Spirit of the Lord begin to draw you. And as he draws you, you reach out to him with hunger. Jesus said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. He wants to help you. The church of the living God wants to be the, the avenue by which you come to God. Amen. You've got to be in the church if you're going to be saved. We want to help you be a part of the church today. Amen. God bless you. We pray that we've been a benefit. Pray that something we've said has been a benefit to you. Amen. Let's reach out to others. Our, our witness ought to be at its peak when the world is the darkest. The light never has been so bright as it is when the world is so dark. Amen. Let's make our witness effective. Let's understand the urgency of the hour. God bless you.